when these hoaxes come in like this, we call it a terrorist threat or causing a catastrophe. Just hours after the Illinois Secretary of State testified in the U.S. Senate during a book ban hearing, bomb threats at libraries across the city and suburbs sparked evacuations and police responses. Thanks for joining us. I'm Scott Schneider. And I'm Don Hasbrook. Threats were reported at libraries from Evanston all the way to Aurora. And Chicago police were called to the Harold Washington Library downtown. And that is where Casey Cronus is live tonight. Casey. John and Scott, some of those threats were sent to local libraries by emails. Others received the startling messages through online chats. And many of those libraries tonight stayed closed as police investigated what we now know to be bogus threats. As lawmakers went head to head in D.C. over book bans inside Chicago's biggest library, an employee alerted police to a disturbing message. Officials say an anonymous email stated that a bomb was located somewhere inside the Harold Washington Library. Meanwhile, in Aurora, all three public library branches were evacuated as officers and bomb detection canines swept the buildings. Similar scenes unfolded at libraries in Addison, Evanston, Hanover Park, Schomburg, and Streamwood. All of the threats determined to be false. You have kids who think it's funny, they're actually selling their services on Telegram. Their people are paying them 50 bucks for every shot. According to our cybersecurity experts, most swatting or prank calls and messages are routed through a VPN. Virtual private networks. And when they're using VPNs, they think they can't get caught, but they can. Retired detective Rich Wistocki and president of Be Sure Consulting tells us oftentimes threats are sent from within the U.S., but through a foreign VPN, and that can make it more difficult to trace. Telegram, for example, is based out of the United Arab Emirates. And we can't trace that because they're not cooperating with law enforcement investigations. Offenders could face between 10 and 30 years behind bars if convicted. Meanwhile, a spokesperson with Chicago Public Libraries was not able to comment on the situation as it is now a police investigation. Reporting live downtown, Casey Cronus, Fox 32, Chicago.